38 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. My name is Laura, welcome to my knit night. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so, so much for coming back. I really, really appreciate you guys. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. This is where I come to talk about my knitting because, this is where I come to talk about my knitting because I don't have any in person around here knitting friends and I go a little bit crazy if I don't talk about it and my husband and my toddler have zero interest. I live with my husband and my two-year-old daughter, our two-year-old daughter, um, in the town that is in the most easterly point of England in the UK and we live an average life and I do a lot of knitting which I suppose makes it a little less average. I'm already rambly, we're not even a minute in. <laughs> okay, a um, little bit of housekeeping before we begin. The hashtag strand into summer knit along is going along in the um, knit along with Georgia Knits and the Lonely Knitter Facebook group. And also if you use that hashtag on, um, on <laughs> Instagram, and um you know just to chat about uh the strand into summer and we will also um both have threads in our ravelry groups oh my gosh it's awful today i'm really distracted uh if you can hear that beeping that keeps happening um my dishwasher i did not realize my very lovely husband who knew i was coming in here um he put my dishwasher on or our dishwasher on just before uh, I came through to record. So I had to press pause on the dishwasher, otherwise all you can hear in the background is <laughs> like constantly. And uh, that's well, that face is definitely gonna be my screenshot for the um, episode, YouTube. Uh, so uh, I had to press pause. My lovely dishwasher thinks it's being really friendly and reminding me constantly that it's on pause by going beep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah it's hilarious because he is amazing at filling up the dishwasher puts all the stuff in the dishwasher empties the dishwasher never ever 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 sets it running always leaves it full of dirty stuff and then i'm the one that just comes along and puts the thing in and closes it and presses the button this one time he turns it on just saying anyway um Yes, yeah, so this is where I come to chat about my knitting. We have the Strand Into Summer knit along going on. That is a stranded colour work knit along. That is joint with uh, lovely Katie of the Georgia Knits podcast. And I, I need to just say thank you so much to everyone who has bought my winged gayless pattern. Oh my gosh. I know I heard a couple of people like message me and go, is it not winged gayless when you say it? Not winged? It's my pattern, man. I can say what I want. I know the word winged is winged. This is winged. Winged. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, you know, the, the people that bought it, it wasn't a vast amount when you think about how many people out there have patterns and some of the big designers, how many people buy their patterns and favourite their patterns. But to me, it was a pretty um, brilliant amount. I was really chuffed. It was... Um, more than a few a few of my other patterns have sold and um, it made a difference to me so thank you very 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 much <laughs> and also thank you so much if you like this video like any of my videos or ever have pressed that subscribe button if you are going to press that subscribe button or you have already you're an absolute gem and I can guarantee you that when that notification comes out I do a little <laughs> little happy dance in my Usually in my private spaces, like my house or my car, I have occasionally at work looked at my phone, seen a notification and gone huh, like that and had someone go <laughs> and I had to explain. No one gets it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's most of the admin done apart from one thing, which is that I missed my one year anniversary. I know I talked a few weeks about a weeks ago about um, my podiversary coming up and the fact that I had been filming and putting my yarniness on Insta on, um, Instagram, on, Ravel on YouTube, <laughs> on YouTube for a year. 
and uh, or coming up to a year and then it would be in a couple of weeks and then I forgot about it promptly so I thought about it tonight and the first time that I posted a video on YouTube was the or not a video because I had put videos on YouTube before but posted a Lonely Knitter episode on YouTube was the 24th of April 2018 and here we are on the 5th of May 2019 so um gone over a year this is probably one of the few things that have actually lasted because whenever I do a craft and then pick up an extra thing to go along with it scrapbooking planning cross stitch sewing all the things they fall by the wayside and you know especially to begin with it wasn't weekly I mean it can't be weekly because I've been doing it a year and I've only got 38 episodes but um there was uh, sometimes when it was a good few weeks between episodes now I seem to have nailed going weekly and I've really enjoy it um, as you can probably tell by the very beginning of this video I'm not really feeling it this week <laughs> definitely was not as smiley when we started off and then it's like come on I'll pull yourself together um, I'm just really like feeling really run down at the moment and it's kicking my ass a little bit I've just been really really overly tired and knackered and feeling really rubbish so a lot of stuff hasn't got done that I wanted to get done this week haven't blocked my Perth shawl, my new shawl design, which is going to be the road to Perth. I still need to make a couple more alterations on the Blunderstone shawl before I can get that out to all my other testers. I have one tester, which is the lovely Sharon from SCR1TNO, who um, said that she would test for me and then <laughs> ask me for the pattern before I was ready to send it out. But Sharon is my yarn mum, trust her completely. <laughs> And so I sent it to her, emailed it across to her, and um, she then got stalled at one point before I made a tutorial for the cluster stitch that I use in it. Um, and she is now from running because if you are a subscriber, you may have noticed that the cluster stitch tutorial went up this week. So that is there, and there will be a couple of patterns coming up soon that use that um, stitch in it. Anyway, I think that is all the admin, so we'll crack on to finished objects. There are no finished objects in this house. This is part of what I mean about the fact that I have been a bit off colour this week. Really feeling a bit knackered and... Uh, that's going to be my screenshot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've just been feeling really awful this week and um, quite a few times I've not even wanted to knit. What is wrong with me? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I do not know. It has been bizarre. There has been multiple times this week when I've just sat there holding a minute and feeling really exhausted and then promptly nodded off. Like just been sat there and just been like not really noticed until I stuck myself in the chest with my needle or something. Um yeah, so there are no finished objects and I'm moving on to whips. There are quite a few whips. In fact, I actually didn't bring one of my whips downstairs. Uh I say quite a few, there's not that many actually. It just feels like tons because I'm getting nothing done and working little bits on everything. Which, if I were Sharon, SCR1TNO Sharon, that would be fine because she starts this, I mean she's stopped at the moment, but she does this um, knitting project. So she rotates her whips on a six day rotation. And it must take a while to get to FOs that way. I need to learn some patience. Be a bit more, be like Sharon. Hashtag be like Sharon. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll start with the thing that I've been working on most this week so last week I showed you the Moon Drip Swancho which is a pattern I'm testing for Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns well I think I told you last week that I'd had a few little issues with colour and that I had to pull back a couple of times well actually this is the fourth uh, try at this pattern with another colour uh, so um, I ripped it out last week I I ripped out um, the new colour that I decided I really liked, changed my mind um, and decided I didn't like it and instead uh, you'll remember the amazing package that I got in the not going to EYF swap that went on online, I got a skein of old rusted chair and I loved it and I kept thinking about it from when I got it to thinking oh should I, should I, should I not? Um, swap this in and I did on um, Monday of this week I Monday morning I ripped out 
So after I podcast, I podcast on Sunday nights and post on Monday morning. Monday morning, while I was putting up the podcast, I ripped all the way back to here, all the way back to the ribbing, and knit again. It's very crumpled up on the needles because um, because I don't have any longer needles than this, and I spend my money on yarn rather than multiple needles. But here we go. So Heather's short rows here at the back, so it's um, nice and fits nicely around there. Just don't want to lose any stitches, but my colour work is a little crumpled. But this actually isn't crumpling from the colour work. This is some increases that have just made the wrinkles there. But this will all block out. And then here it is the Moon Drip Swan Show, and it does have moons. And for those who want to see the floats, show us your floats. And yeah, it's on way too small a needle, so it's super, super bunched up. You can't tell how lovely this pattern is, but... The colour work is so nice, uh, the, the charts are so, so nice and it's really bunched and looks like I cannot do colour work for the life of me, but if you see, it's not that bad. It will block right out. And for this I'm using Dye Dye Done in the red. I am using old rusted chair, you know, hand, um, hand wound hand wound centre pull ball because I couldn't find my ball winder when I, when I wound it up and then John Arbon uh, knit by numbers 114 uh, in 4x so it's a fingering weight swancho those of you who have been watching for a while know that I seem to have real issues with actually finishing garments this is a test so I am usually better with things when they I uh, actually have deadlines and are for other people's things, so the fact that this is a test, maybe I have a chance, maybe. I have decided that I am not going to cast on any more adult garments for myself until I have finished some of the ones I have, because I have a floozy, the Moon Drips one show, a floozy, a tanya, I have a, a sipola, a neck of a sipola. Um, was that it? Just four. Only four garments on the needles. Three of which I haven't worked on in ages. It is only four, isn't it? I thought there was one more, but let's pretend there's not. But then also on top of that, I am knitting a flax for my friend. So, you know, no more garments for me. I have got a garment coming up that is for someone else, so I will talk about that in a bit. Uh, this is all living in my absolutely amazing bag by So Can Jo. So, let me get this off here. This is a lovely, lovely, huge bag, and it has cats on washing line, and it's amazing, and it's a drawstring bag with a brilliant, sturdy handle, and this bag has been going everywhere with me. I sometimes just jam my purse and my phone in here as well. Not my keys, because keys get tangled in knitting, but um, I just... This, I've just been walking around with this hanging off my wrist and knitting all week and I absolutely love, love, love this bag. So keep an eye out because Jo is going to be setting or has set up an Etsy shop and is going to be launching that um, I think in the summer she has said. So keep an eye out, um, go follow her on Instagram as that so can Jo. Yeah, there's her little tag on there. But it's so nice. So that's living in here. My next whip, I worked a very, very little bit on my northeasterly blanket. I haven't been able to find my northeasterly blanket. I found it, it's in the back of my wardrobe. Um, it's still living in a Christmas bag because I was knitting it with my Christmas mini. So I had an advent calendar for the first time this year just been. Um, it was a swap that I did with, I was amazingly, amazingly paired up with Jane of Family Tree Yarns. Jane is amazing, she's a brilliant dyer. Go and check out her Etsy shop, Family Tree Yarns. And um, so I was paired with Jane and she got, so it was a five gram sock mini advent calendar swap and she got my five gram sock leftover minis and I got an amazing advent calendar from her shop which was 10 grams for every uh, day rather than five. And so I designed my first pattern that went online in December which was the Show She Scraps Mitts. 
um, but that didn't take much of every mini. So when I finished putting a stripe into those mitts, I then went on to put a section into the Northeast Sea Blanket, which is a lovely, lovely, fabulous pattern by Melissa, um, Melissa Alexander Loomis, who is Skein Anagans online and um, has many more now fabulous patterns. Anyway, here is my Northeasterly blanket so far. It is not big. I have not worked on this much this year. So most of this was done back in December and I haven't really picked it up since. Only because there's just been so much on my needles, it's been crazy. But because, as I said, I have been a bit drained this week, I just picked it up for a little while because it was nice and simple and but it still had a little something to it. So the green is what I have done. So it is really a very, very little amount. I just did a little bit yesterday, but I thought it's worthwhile talking about, especially because I found it and I'm so happy I found it. So this is, I think, so I've done a um, mitered square blanket, cozy memories blanket. Gave up on it halfway through. It's huge. It's like, it's, it's well and big enough to cover Ellie and cover a good section of me. So I do use it, but it is a big triangle because I just gave up. <laughs> um, and I don't, I, I do like those squares and that sort of blanket. And I have actually started another one that I'm going to do borders with at some point. But I think this might be my one of one of my favourites because I also have um, is it the pinwheel scrap blanket uh, pattern on Ravelry by um, Mina Phillip, uh, the knitting expat. I really like that one as well. So I think between that one and this one, they might be my two that I really want to work on and build up next. So um, this one's already started, but I'm going to make this one probably a bit bigger. It'll at least be a blanket for Ellie, if not for me, because it is gonna have to grow quite a lot. But the great thing about these is that I've just put all these stitches on hold, but I could always cast these off. And then in the future, if I really did want to make it bigger, I could just pick out those cast off stitches and knit some more <laughs> so this was started back when the pattern was released and this first strip is knit from a set of mini minis like really little minis from someone who i can't remember i i bought them on etsy and then the rest is all family tree yarns so far and i have a bunch more of the minis they're all in little hand wound up little balls um to pick from and I have a bag over here because in here was just the ones that had already gone into the um, scraps mitts that I was knitting. Well, I knit a couple more pairs. So now I have this bag that is also full of the five gram minis that are left over. So I can pick from all of those to go in here now. So they're not going to be in the order that they came from the advent calendar. I'm just going to pick ones out as I like them together. So I've got lots of choice, which is really nice. And I want to get all of these Family Tree Yarns minis into the blanket before I start putting any other brands in, I think. I think I'd like to try that. So we'll see. I'm not going to work on it religiously. I'm not going to have it become a chore. It's just going to be something that can hang around as and when. Uh, this is in a Christmas bag because it was the bag I was using because it was coming up to Christmas when I was knitting on it. And I just haven't swapped it out yet. And I really like this bag. So this is a Jilly Makes bag. And this is one I bought from her on the run up to Christmas last year. And it's one of her um, peanuts bags. So she has some lovely Snoopy bags quite often. And this is actually my second Snoopy bag. I have another one that's actually in reaching distance that has a pair of vanilla socks in. That's one of that, those style bags. But it's, um, that's like a cartoon Snoopy fabric. But this one is a Christmas Charlie Brown Snoopy um, project bag and it is drawstring but it has this really nice big, I have looped this onto a carabiner onto my um, handbag <laughs> when it was coming up to Christmas and I was knitting on this loads and it also has, I've put it on here, a Snoopy like, keychain and then it's drawstring but it has this fabulous little handle just on this side of the drawstring so it's big enough to go through your wrist but you can still have the bag open as much as you want to knit. So I really, really like this bag. So I'm actually gonna, even though it's not Christmas, I do not care, I love this bag so much. Um, it's going to stay in here. And it also has a little badge of a owl knitting that I put on there because I am cool like that. 
Uh, so that has had a little bit of love this week. And the last thing, I was debating whether or not to show you this, but you know what? Rubbish are keeping secrets. I am going to be keeping some secrets this year. Uh, especially a secret I have with a person, the, the yarn dyer who I'm keeping a secret with. She knows. She's the only person who's allowed to know. She sent me some yarn to start working on a thing that is coming much later in the year. And I am going to start it. You know who you are. <laughs> and um, I'm going to start it very soon. I have a big idea. So that is going to be a secret. And you know what? I was just like, how am I going to keep other secrets at the same time? And I was going to keep this to do a um, pattern to come out way later in the year as well. But actually, I've decided to just watch a knit on this right now and get this pattern out because I love it so much. It's just in my head. These socks, they're going to be called my runway socks. So I'll put it on the blocker so you can see. But uh, those of you who've watched before, you'll have seen the Blunderstone shawl that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, that is a shawl designed from Woolly Knit Yarns uh, for Sam of Yarntopia to put into kits. And um, I put in the cluster stitch, or I call it the cluster stitch. And I've just put a tutorial up online for the cluster stitch. Well, I really like that stitch and I decided I would also like to put it into a pair of socks. So these, and they need a good block because they have been screwed up in my bag for a little while, not getting much love. But these are the runway socks uh, because the straight lines going down them really remind me of runways. And um, my granddad is a pilot, my dad is a pilot, and my brother is nearly finished. He's got to do a certain amount of hours in the sim and um, a certain amount of flight hours and then he will be able to become a commercial pilot same as my dad and my um, granddad is. So yeah I've spent a lot of my childhood at um, an airfield and um, yeah flying has always been a big part of my family and our lives and I just thought this is just what this reminded me of lights and um, the straight lines, I just think runways when I see it. So the runway socks, these are being knit out of Family Tree Yarns. Again, lovely Jane of Family Tree Yarns. Go and check out her Etsy shop. Not only is she fabulous, her yarn is amazing. So I picked these back up. Just move these around so they're in the middle. So the back of the sock will all be stock in it because I actually quite like a plain back of the sock and you know when you feel like you whiz through something like I, I have some one of my sock patterns especially the champion socks is patterned all around the leg and um I love that that's fine with that but do you know I love being able to knit across the first needle on my magic loop and then like you know do the pattern think 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 and then just whiz across the back and not really think about it and whiz round. So I picked these back up. They have been sat in a project bag at about here for a little while and I really wanted a small project to work on this week, especially after I had ripped out and re knit the colour work of the Moon Drip Swan Show again. So I did the rest of the leg that I wanted done and I put in a heel flap and gusset and then started on the gusset decreases. So these are being knit out of Knit Pro Zings in E2.25. Knit Pro Zings are definitely not, 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 not my favourite in any way, shape or form. But they were just, I think, the only needles that I had at the point that I had cast this on, so they're still on there. There is a contrasting um, mini in this. This was a sock set from Jane. So there's my contrasting mini for the heel. And I think this sock set might have been... Thunderbird? I actually haven't looked at the tag for a while, so this is Jane Family Tree Yarns. And it's one of her club colourways for this year that she sent me. She's an absolute sweetheart. And this is the Thunderbird colourway, and it is actually a sparkle sock. Don't know if it will show up at all on camera, but in real life it's a lovely, lovely sparkle. So I'll just show you it in the cake, which is a little bit worse for wear because I've been banging it around my bag for a while. But yeah, you can see the sparkle there, right? And then here's the mini. The mini is not sparkle, which actually I think works really, really nicely in the knit up sock. So the toe is also gonna be from the contrasting mini. 
and um, yeah I'm really hoping maybe I'll have one of these done by next week and then I'll be able to get the pattern out for testing once I have one of the socks done. This is living in my Mrs Brown's bag, one of her sock sets that I bought with leftover birthday money last year, she had a summer sale and I got money off like 15% off or something it was on, on the Etsy shop and I had one of her Mrs Brown's bags for ages, Mrs Brown's bag, bags, bag for ages, is that what I want to say? I'd wore one for ages and um, couldn't really justify it because I got stung for customs. I think I paid like £11 on customs. So even after my discount, I still ended up paying more than originally what it was. I would have loved a bigger bag as well, but you know, that's life. But yeah, it is a really nice knit print bag. So it's living in this one. Those are all my whips, apart from my flax. So I am knitting a medium sized adult flax. That is the Tin Can Knits Free pattern. And. Um, so my friend Lily, she has an absolutely fabulous friend, would do anything for anyone. She she bought the yarn, she bought Drops yarn, she bought it a while ago, and I am knitting it just incredibly slowly, and I happened to see her this weekend, and she said, how are you getting on with my jumper? And I was like, get out. And I knit on it a bit, I showed her what she'd done. To be fair, she thought I hadn't even cast on, but I have knit to about here. On me it'd be like here, because I'm definitely not a medium. <laughs> Um, but you know, I am definitely okay with knitting for friends who are a smaller size than me. You know, I've knit an extra large flax and a medium is less stitches. That's fine. But yeah, I haven't brought it downstairs, it's upstairs and I am not risking waking my toddler. When I came to set up to do all of this, it was a little bit earlier and um, she was a bit restless getting down tonight. So. Okay, so we're on to stash enhancement. Technically no stash enhancement for me this week, but some yarn did come through my door, so I have been very good, I'm still not buying any yarn, I haven't bought yarn for a few weeks, I know I got lots in last week, but that was just because I have been sending out swaps um, and receiving swaps back, so I haven't got any more of those to come, so we'll see, I am going to the Monty in June, I am hoping to be able to afford to buy some yarn. Uh, but I am on a bit of a tight budget at the moment and um, I'm mainly going to see my amazing friends Mia and Katie and a few other people who have said that they are going to be going as well. I will be going on the Sunday and um, yeah I'm really excited and I'm really hoping I will be able to put some money aside to buy yarn there. Uh, but in the meantime I have told myself that I'm not allowed to buy any yarn because you know I'm being good and also I'm going to Perth in September so then as soon as War Monty is done I have to save up for Perth. <laughs> I have plans but as I said some yarn did come into the house this week. This is not my yarn. <laughs> this is oh my gosh it's so incredibly soft. Every time I pick it up I remember how soft it is and I'm like oh. So this is the drift base from Brambles and Me. So I'll just show you Mia's tag. Now Brambles and Me, the tie behind Brambles and Me is my amazing friend Mia. She is lovely. Myself, Mia, Katie of George Stewart's. We are a little three and we have a group chat and we just are sort of in it together. <laughs> um, yeah, they are my yarn buddies. And um, this is sent to me by Mia because I am going to be test knitting a sample for her. So the amazing Katie, George Knits, my knitting bestie, she is currently designing a top it is called the Bensham and it's a um, sleeveless top for summer she's knitting it out of Rambles and Me yarn and she's currently is currently out testers to testers and I said that I would love to test it Mia also wanted to sample I didn't really have tons of money for yarn I wanted to support my friend in testing it and I just wanted to be involved because Katie's awesome and I want to be involved. <laughs> um, I'm very in awe of her designing a garment. Um, so I want to be involved and Mia said, well if I send you the yarn, you could knit me a sample as the test knit, so you can test knit, but I'll send you the yarn and then you send me back the, um, the sample. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
So this isn't mine. This is just here for a little while. Um, and when I said that I wasn't casting any, on any garments for myself, this is not doesn't count. <laughs> so this is a sport weight yarn, and it's in the drift base, which is 80% super fine alpaca and 20% silk, and that is 100 grams to 262 meters. This is the cherished moments colorway. This is actually the colorway that I also used in my Road to Perthshire, which I haven't blocked because I'm a bad, um, bad podcaster. Just again because I've been feeling awful this week, absolutely awful, and just haven't got around. So it's still not blocked. Um, and I'm sure it will look a little different, but this is um, just the difference in in bases. Is there is a big difference? This is not. This is the. I forgot what base this is, and I haven't got the ball bands in here with me. But this is her one that has all these little um, Donegal nep thingies in it, and I love, love, love it. Um, so this is cherished moments, as is this, but it comes out quite differently on the diff very different types of bases. But I love this yarn, it's really blowing out on here. It's a really soft, really soft, beautiful baby pink that's almost, oh, when I say baby pink, it's all, it's gone a slightly, um, it's, it's, it's slightly not, I can't really even explain. It's so nice. It's got, it's, not, it's getting shine off it from there because it's that amazing, the silk in there, I think, it's just, shiny it's so nice anyway so here i am snuggled up in mia's yarn whilst cuddling mia's yarn <laughs> um yeah mia's yarn go and check out brambles and me online she has a website and um just an all-round good egg and nice yarn nice yarn <laughs> i'm tired man can you tell anyway so um no sash enhancement for me this week boo uh, plans though, I do have some plans. So I brought this in to talk about. So it was part of a solidarity swap. This is one of the, ah! <laughs> this is one of the skeins that I received in my solidarity swap package um, from my fabulous, fabulous partner. I still haven't asked her if I'm allowed to say who she is online. I don't really want to ask, she's okay with that, so I haven't disclosed her name but this amazing skein of machete shop it's so gorgeous it's too gorgeous anyway there is now a solidarity swap make along going on and this is going to be my entry i need to remember to take a picture and go over to the ravelry group and pop it in there but i am thinking i really might be getting ahead of myself here i'm thinking i would like to try a child's garment so a little top thing for Ellie so it's 100 grams of simple sock in the sleepy willow colorway which is so nice so nice and it is 75% 25 um, super wash merino nylon and I feel like I could get something out of this for Ellie even if it's just a little cropped I'm not thinking any sleeves or just very very short sleeves so um so yeah, this is going to be my have a go at designing a garment, even though it's a child's garment. Um, my first garment with my solidarity swap, some of my solidarity swap yarn. So I'm gonna have a try, gonna have a try. Uh, if it doesn't work, you will never hear about it again. <laughs> and um, and if it does work, but for Ellie, and I am just frightened out of my brain with the idea of writing it up and with the idea of grading it for different ages um then it may never see another it may never see design land it might just be sitting on the go and then leaving it <laughs> so um but yeah this is my plan for the solidarity swap if it all goes absolutely completely and utterly tits up then i will knit some socks i always want to do some rose city rollers uh, if it goes fabulously, then I'll be walking in here in a few weeks' time with my look at my new project, I am the dog's bollocks. So, um, ha, we'll wait and see. <laughs> um, yeah. That's everything, man. Wow. I can't believe I got through that in less than 35 minutes. It wasn't a lot, really, because, as I said, I've just been feeling absolutely naff all week. Absolutely naff. Um, hopefully it will pass soon. I think I'll just a bit, bit run down, need to be eating a bit more veggies. I'm not the healthiest eater. 
yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, so, uh, blah, 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 stop saying yeah, say other things. What have I been watching this week? So this week, I barely watched any pod, uh, podcasts. I feel so bad because I watch so many and love them all. I watched George Nitz this week, Katie. Always watch Katie, I'm not gonna lie, she is my knitting bestie. I need my Katie fix to get through the week. I didn't watch Sharon, SCR1TNO, because last week I watched her Sunday episode before I recorded. So that was last week's one, and today she has released a new episode, but I haven't had a chance to watch it. It came out this afternoon, and um, I just haven't had a second to sit down and watch it, uh, where I wasn't toddlerified. She was a bit on me this afternoon. So um, I haven't watched Sharon yet, but I will be watching her very soon. There's also new episodes of other people out that I haven't, just haven't got around to watching this week. Um, Harry Sheep podcast, um, with Emma and Rosie, uh, Morgan, Ramblin' Needles. Watched the first 10 minutes of the Stranded podcast, or listened to, because I didn't really watch it, because I was faffing about um, the Stranded podcast. Like, there are so many, like, Clogs in Africa, I think, has a new episode. I think she's got to her one year podiversary. Woohoo, congratulations, Iris. Um, but, like, I just don't really know what's happened. I've been so knackered, slash busy with a toddler. Multiple times I've gone to watch podcast and... Like ended up colouring or play doing and just not podcast, not watching podcasts and oh, and then a few times I've been really tired in the evenings and actually I've worked a couple of evenings this week, um, but a couple of times I've been really knackered in the evenings and just fallen asleep. So yeah, um, little rundown of my week. Monday I worked a late, so I didn't finish work until about half ten, and then I drove my one of my colleagues home because her car had broken down, so I didn't actually get home until about. 10 to 11 and then I have to sit up and wash my work shirt because I washed my second work shirt with my work tunic that I wear because I work in a pharmacy um my second work tunic that I have I washed with a purple pen in the pocket which exploded and now I have because it's a blue tunic but so now it's a purple pink blue tie-dye tunic <laughs> and I cannot fix it to save the life of me and I can't wear it and I don't want to ask them for a second one because it was pushing it to ask them for a second one in the first place because they only work the equivalent of two and a half days a week. So I um, have to sit up on a Monday night when I get home and put my shirt on a 15 minute wash and then a spin and dry, like it's not dry because I haven't got a dryer anymore because it broke, but I have to spin it with like a little get all the extra water out and then go put it in the dry body because I have an ancient JML dry body upstairs. Thank goodness because after my um tumble dryer broke that thing saves me every week so i get to bed like midnight ish on between half 11 and midnight on a um, monday night and then have to get up to go to work in the morning and i do a day shift so i do like half eight till half five but it's always an earlier leave because i always leave earlier in the morning because i have to drop ellie off at my mother-in-law's first so yeah, I worked till half five, went and got my little squiddly diddly, and we came home, promptly fell asleep Tuesday night. Uh, Wednesday, I went back into work. We had a lovely day, went out to our friends, and um, just went to um, the wildlife park that we have a um, season ticket to. We call it, it's a, um, we call it a wildlife park, but it's, it's like a, it's not quite a zoo, so it's, it's called Africa Alive, and it has like, lions and monkeys and giraffes and rhinos and zebras but I, I don't know why it's not a zoo maybe it's just not big enough i'm not sure it's not a full day thing like a, i don't know anyway so we went like there and hung out and just had a busy day and then i went into work and worked 7 p.m till 10 p.m just to try and clear some work because they're really behind because bank holidays in pharmacy make hell on earth and then um thursday Ellie had her swimming lesson and she was actually really good. I think I talked about it a few weeks ago on the podcast. She had a swimming lesson that she wasn't so happy about going to swim in with and cried quite a bit and screamed and I did not force her to do the things that were making her cry in the pool because I don't force children to swim and cry. <laughs> um, but this week she wanted to do half the stuff and she was way less clingy and it was really nice. And then Friday we saw our friends, went out with our friends. We Where did we go? went to our friend's house, went to our friend's house because it was a horrible day, it was minging outside, absolutely minging. Um, so yeah, we went around our friend's house, 
and they played and trashed her house, not mine. <laughs> She's really tidy and um, really good at cleaning. <laughs> I'm not so great. <laughs> My house is clean, but like hers is sparkling and it all smells nice all the time. Um, mine, it's not crimey, like it's not, but it's not like you don't walk in and go, wow, I guess I'll show him. Um, but hers is gorgeous. And so when the kids trash her living room, she just sits there with a big smile on her face, really happy, lets them trash it all. And then she can tidy up in 10 seconds flat, whereas sometimes when my kid trashes my house, uh, it's a big job. <laughs> um, her house is really organized as well. She knows where, like with Ellie, Ellie has a wooden pizza and it has all these little pizza toppings and all Velcro patches and you stick all of, maybe 50% of the pizza toppings are definitely with the pizza. The other 50% of the toppings are somewhere in my house. I don't know. Sometimes I find one stuck to my sock. So, you know, <laughs> that's the sort of house we live in. <laughs> so we had a nice day there on um, Friday and then Friday night. I went back into work. I only did 7.30 till 10 on Friday night. Because I had other stuff going on. But just to try and help catch up again. Saturday we were all off and we just wasted the morning didn't really do much and then I were like I was gonna we had all these plans to like clear out our house I've been feeling really rough Chris hasn't been feeling great we just didn't do it um then we went out with our friends on Saturday and we went to the arcades in Yarmouth it's a town of Great Yarmouth which is near to me it's a bit of a dump I mean, Lowestoft's a dump too. This is seaside towns for you in Britain. They've all gone, well, no, they haven't. Some of them are really nice. Certain seaside towns in Britain have all gone to the dogs. But um, it's a bit grimy, but that's just what they're like. Um, yeah, we went to the arcades and took Ellie to go on the TP machines with some of our friends, her guide parents. So um, two different, two other couples. We went and they, they have those TP machines. So we were getting put in two pieces and she loved that she loved collecting the money out the bottom she had the best time we found some machines that had sweets in as well we managed to win some of the sweets as well as the two peas she just thought it was amazing but the two pea machines were the ones that crank out little tickets at the same time sometimes they're not the ones that do the tickets are there and then um everyone was piling their tickets together and letting her put them through the machine and then go and get prizes so she came back with some tat <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's tat. So she's she's got like a plastic police car and a little lorry tanker thing, um, and some Disney princess plastic key rings. And she was ridiculously happy. She's been asking ever since to go back. <laughs> she had a great time. And then they came round back here and we were Chinese and just chilled out for the evening. And then today we've done barely anything. Um Chris's sister came over for a little while she's just been to Disneyland Paris. I want to go back to Disney. And um, yeah, we've just done nothing we were going to do on this three day weekend because tomorrow is Bank Holiday Monday and we can do more stuff. But Chris has to do about four hours of work. We need to clear off the dining table so we can get some work done tomorrow. But we've just got nothing we were going to do done. Bit of a waste, but I'm knackered. Can't be bothered. So yeah, I realised the last 10 minutes have been the most boring thing in the world, nobody cares. But do you know sometimes, oh my gosh, this is going to sound really, really morbid. Sometimes I think, if I die, please don't be, I'm not being morbid, I promise. It's just how my brain works. If I die, I want someone to go, Ellie, your mum did these knitting podcasts. And yeah, it's mainly about knitting. Right now, she's very, very, very interested in knitting. I have high hopes for this child. But if I die, I like the idea that someone could say, hey, if you want to go and see your mum chatting for an hour, 38 times over, she could come on here. And yeah, she might sit through 30 minutes, 35, 40 minutes of knitting. Just, I'm here. <laughs> but then at the end, she gets this little, oh, look, this is what we did that week. So yeah, it's super morbid, but there's that little extra and I'm like, huh, quite like that idea. So yeah, okay, this is going to sound really morbid, but if I'm dead, Ellie, love you. You're the best. I love you. Okay, 
okay, I have truly cracked. I'm gonna have to tell a bunch of the people that I know will watch this that I am okay and I'm definitely, there are no dying plans. Like I'm definitely not planning on going anywhere. I will be back next week for episode 39. But, <laughs> you know, you don't know at what point in the future anything could happen to anyone. And this record is gonna be up on YouTube for all the rest of the time that YouTube lets it be up there. <laughs> so, um, saving a little bit of myself in cyberspace here. Definitely gonna have to message at least four people and tell them I haven't cracked. <laughs> Maybe I have. Maybe I have cracked. <laughs> um, I'm really knackered. Really, really knackered. And I'm gonna go and go to bed because we're 45 minutes in and I'm just talking about whether or not I die and I'm leaving a message for my child. <laughs> it's getting really weird. Anyway, um, thanks so much if you've got this far through. I promise next week, as long as I've had a good amount of sleep, I may be slightly more normal. I mean, look at the bags under my eyes. They are carrying some baggage. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm off. <laughs> thank you so much if you've watched all the way through. And thank you as always for making me so much less of a lonely knitter.